Thank you, Mr. Yes, come. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Have a seat. Uh, shall yes. we call you Manorama or Pooja? So my name is Pooja. Pooja. Manorama is my mother's name. Okay. Have a seat, Pooja. Pooja is from Pune, Maharashtra. Yes. And uh, Pooja has taken anthropology. Yes. And uh, you are a medical doctor. Yes. All right. And uh, <coughs> coming to your services, IAS, IPS, and IFS. And uh, your uh, hobbies include doodling, abstract ideas, okay? Yes. Conducted research on domestic violence, health issues of geriatric patients. Yes. Okay. And painting, played badminton, uh, organized uh, as secretary, national medical research conference, leadership of winning village in water harvesting competition. Leadership of winning village in water harvesting competition. Yes. What exactly is this? Uh, sir, actually this was a competition organized by Pani Foundation in Maharashtra. Uh, so it had, because since drought and is a very major problem in uh, the rain shadow areas of Maharashtra. So this uh, competition was organized for the best use of uh, water harvesting techniques. In okay. The was, it an, was it an essay? Or was it a slogan competition? Uh, no, sir. We had to uh, create water harvesting structures in the village, uh, like contour trenches and engineering of the whole village. So it was a, a, a was basically an asset creation. Is it a competition? Yes, sir. It was. So how many uh, participants were there? Sir, from uh, like almost the uh, almost all the gram panchayats in Maharashtra had participated. They had made different blocks, mm -hmm. so uh, division wise. So almost all the grand So you had organized this competition. So I had organized the um, effort in the village. Hmm. Uh, so like the um, representation of the village, uh, we had organized. Of a particular village. Yes. You were representing yes. that village. Okay. And also uh, Pulse Polio program also. Yes. So uh, tell us, Pooja, what are the evils associated with the medical profession? Positive things everyone knows. What are the evils? And those evils which you will concentrate on once you become a district magistrate. In that capacity, what exactly are the improvements that you are going to make in the medical profession trying to remove some of the evils associated with this noble profession? Um, sir, I think uh, more than... Uh, so if we... Uh, consider it in ethical terms as an evil, yeah. um, then sir, we can say commercialization of medical practice, mm -hmm. where it has, in many cases, we can see it has changed from being a noble profession to a profit motive. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing. Um, so second thing is, uh, I feel the reluctance of the doctors mm -hmm. uh, to work in rural areas. Mm -hmm. This is one of the problems. Okay. Um, so the third is um, concentration in private healthcare rather than public health care. This mm -hmm. is the third. Sir, um, as a district magistrate. Any others? It's a high cost of uh, medical services. That is one of the... Generic versus branded medicines. Yes, sir. Freebies given by the various companies. Medical the doctors. Yes, sir. Are they not evils? Um, sir... Freebies, yes, we can say they are. But, uh, sir, in generic and branded medicines, there is, we can still see a debate. Yeah, so people write the branded medicines more. Whereas the government policy is yes, sir. the same salt one should write generic medicine. Yes, sir. So will it correct. not come under the category of evil practice or unprofessional um, practice? Yes, sir, we can call it an unprofessional practice. Okay, so what will you do to... Get rid of this as district magistrate. So, of, uh, in case of generic and branded no, medicine? No, generally. About whatever you can do as a district magistrate to bring about an improvement in the health services. Getting rid of these things. Unprofessionalism. Not going to the rural areas. Absence from the uh, PHCs, you see. Uh, so, this will need um, efforts on multiple fronts. 
not one policy or one yes, initiative. Yes, come out concrete steps. One, two, three, four. Yes, sir. Sir, in case of um, doctors not going to the rural areas, as a district magistrate, I can incentivize doctors, like it was done in one of the Madhya Pradesh districts, uh, where doctors were given at par remuneration, and uh, a specialists were invited to the district hospitals. Mm -hmm. So this can be done. And uh, so second is about generic and branded medicines. Uh, so we can uh, put an oversight over whether these things have been uh, are being followed in practice or not. Uh, and sir, um, the third one about um, commercialization of medical services. So here also as a district collector, I think monitoring and um, paying attention um, to what exactly is happening in the district. If we in, increase the monitoring, then I think most of this can be solved. Okay, just one or two things I wanted to ask you, your views. Should government doctors uh, indulge in private practice? which is quite common nowadays. Um, sir, I feel uh, as a government doctor, um, presently um, uh, by rules and regulations, they are not allowed to have private practice. Uh, so secondly, I feel that uh, when you are in a government uh, job as a doctor, it is a 24 by 7 calling. So. so doing private practice along with it might compromise the efficiency in uh, delivering services at the government hospital. So, so I think it should be restricted. Okay. What is your view about institutionalized deliveries? What can you do to increase the institutionalized deliveries? Uh, so the major problem in not having institutionalized deliveries by women is because of lack of awareness of the problems that can happen. Um, the dyes which are present have been doing this. So, so we can, uh, as the ASHAs and ANMs, we can strengthen them to um, increase the enrollments for institutionalized deliveries. Okay. Uh, why is it that C-section has become very popular nowadays instead of the normal deliveries? So, there are two reasons. Uh, one is a medical reason mm -hmm. and one is a, a, we can say, a commercial benefit mm -hmm. motive. So the medical reason is that uh, late marriages and complicated pregnancies, like mm. high-risk pregnancies, have increased mm. over a period of time. Mm. So, so uh, the requirement of cesarean section has increased. So the second uh, trend we can see is in, uh, even where uh, normal deliveries are possible for uh, profit motives, uh, private sectors are following uh, uh, cesarean sections instead of normal deliveries. Okay. My last question to you would be not related to the medical profession as such. Uh, what are the issues that arise in a referendum? Do you think referendum is a good method to uh, take a decision on a particular policy? So can I take a few seconds? Yeah, surely. Think about it. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, first uh, to address your first question, the issues with referendum. Um, yes. So the issues can be um, informed public choice. Uh, in, may, in many cases, uh, people do not have proper information to make a choice on an issue. So that could be one of the major problems with a referendum. Uh, so second, the use of referendum. Uh, sir, it will depend on what kind of uh, policy or uh, decision it is being used to make. Don't you think the views of the minorities are suppressed in the case of a referendum? Uh, so the, the minority views might be recorded, but since the, the numbers are less, uh, it can... Do you think Britain is regretting the decision which it took? to come out of the European Union in form of Brexit? So the stand of Britain has been that uh, it uh, means that uh, it want, wants to stay out of the Euro, uh, European Union. Uh, but sir, uh, I do not have uh, no, much no information. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Pooja, yes, uh, sir. which are the favorite areas of your interest as far as the anthropology is concerned? Um, 
socio-economic anthropology and tribal anthropology. Tribal anthropology. Yes, sir. Okay. So you are posted as joint secretary in the Ministry of Sports. And you have to uh, make some policies about selection of sports person. How will you deploy the knowledge of anthropology in that? So there's a branch of anthropology, uh, which is kin anthropometry or anthropometry, uh, which uses um, biological measurements, uh, depending on which the body types are classified. And depending on that, uh, a suggestion is made for which, uh, the, which body type is um, suitable. suitable for, for which what kind, kind of, of sport. So, so this can be used as... Okay. What about designing or devising the military weapons? Yes, sir. Um, so um, designing the, the, a military weapon when it has to be used, um, it has to be very precise, uh, precise and uh, the maneuverability uh, should be good for the uh, operator. Right. So, so this, the measurements for that uh, has to be uh, very well taken because it, uh, the precision will depend on the operate, operation of that. So, so anthropometry helps in this. Okay. Now, uh, you must have studied the concept of uh, Jajmani system. Yes. So, what is Jajmani system and why did it decline? Uh, so, Jajmani system was a traditional system uh, based on um, um, providing a particular kind of service to the Jajman. So, it, um, it, uh, a judgment had many patrons, um, so um, different kind of services were uh, provided like say for example a washerman or a um, goldsmith was providing service to the judgment and in turn he was getting patronage from that judgment uh, for generations together. Sir, uh, there are two, three reasons for the decline of the system. So, the first reason we can see a changes in the rural society itself. Uh, so, second is um, empowerment and uh, increase of social mobility of these uh, so-called lower castes, um, which have Service providing class. Yes, sir. Uh, so, which have changed in occupation. Okay. So, the third reason is uh, the subsequent generations have not followed uh, the system which was present. So okay. That Can you it. cite some technological okay. reasons also? Certain inventions which has led to the decline of certain type of services. You want a hint? Uh, yes, sir. Like um, daily use appliances, say for example, a washing machine yeah. has replaced a washerman's service. So okay. In what that else? Context. Um, a service which was requisitioned almost daily, or maybe at least every alternate day. Besides requiring it once a month, that has been replaced. The daily service has been replaced at least. Barbers, the yes, shaving, sir. the safety yes, razor, yes, sir. nail cutter and safety razor. Right. Sir. Okay. Uh, if you have to compare the condition of the tribals in our country and tribals of certain countries in Africa, what would be your conclusion? What are the common things and uncommon things or where the tribals societies are comparable and not comparable. Sir, uh, first I feel on the basis of occupation follow. Sir, um, majority of the tribals in India are not following the traditional occupations which they used to follow. Though there are tribes which are still following the traditional occupation. So whereas in many of the tribes in Africa like the Zulus and the other um, tribes, they are still following the traditional occupation. Sir, second is um, uh, the uh, movement of these tribes. Sir, in India, most of the tribes are following a settled kind of occupation, whereas in Africa, they are still more of uh, nomads Itinerant. and transcendence. Okay. Um, sir, the third, uh, uh, sir, uh, the next uh, issue where we see common uh, uh, commonalities is uh, the development, where overall uh, tribals have lagged behind the general population in terms of socioeconomic indicators and um, other development parameters. So this is one of the commonality. And um, so uh, state-wise, if we see recognition of these tribals 
it has been done by states in Africa, uh, by countries in Africa, as well as in India. So these are the comments. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As a leader, you are leader in a project related to some village. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Sir. And you came first there. Yes, the village one. Village came first. Yes. What different did you do that you did better than the rest? So I think our major focus was on Shramadan or voluntary labor. Mm. So, sir, uh, we uh, formed uh, different teams. Uh, like, for example, I was, uh, I was taking part in uh, 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 the leadership of women. So, um, motivating them to give Shramadan. So, we had uh, almost the whole village contribute in this uh, exercise. What, what did you do yourself physically, personally? Uh, so, first of all, um, we took uh, small meetings in the wards. There are uh, seven to eight wards in the village. So, we took ward meetings. And in that, I told them the importance, why this is necessary for the village and how it will uh, lead to long-term benefits. And uh, though this was only a voluntary work and they would not be paid, how it would, it would impact them. Okay. Now, that was wonderful. The villagers did something they wouldn't be paid. You just mentioned that you will incentivize doctors to go to rural areas. You must have heard of Dr. Kotnis. Dr. Kotnis. Um, no, sir. There is a I'm film called Dr. Kotnis Ki Amar Kahani. Okay, sir. Please see that film. Yes, sir. It's about what a doctor should be. Right. Have you heard of a name called Dr. Manish Rawat? No, sir, I have oh, I'm surprised you haven't heard. This is in the newspaper for the last seven days. He was in Sabdarjang Hospital taking money for, you know, uh, expediting the treatment. And uh, then he was sending people to a particular shop to buy medical equipment required for surgery at very expensive cost. Oh, yes, sir. So, that sir, will I will read it up. Something of interest to you. Yes. So, what comes to my mind is that in India, everybody... The sense of service is all gone. I think that's only left in the army. Vikram Batra never asked for a bonus. Vijayan Thapar, Veer Chakra, he never asked for a bonus. Major Lieutenant Vijay, Vijay Pandey, Manoj Pandey, from Veer Chakra, never asked for a bonus. So, where are we headed? Doctors also want to go to rural only on incentives. And Dr. Manish Rawat, I told you. And of course, we all hear that Corporate hospitals all set a target like other corporates. Right. So, is the medical service heading to the right direction? What needs to be done? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, there has been a large proportion. Like you said, the uh, army, army uh, discipline and the army um, ethos are definitely much uh, uh, in high uh, regard. Mm -hmm. Sir, um, in medicine also, um, I think there is a section of people where this nobility of the profession has gone. So the major thing is, uh, I think uh, the major uh, thing needed is um, attitudinal change in case of the doctors. Because even if we in incentivize them, as you said, it is a temporary measure and it might not change uh, what lies in the core. Mm. So, sir, um, strengthening of medical ethics. Um, making sure that the conduct rules are followed, medical ethics, professional ethics is followed. I think See, that is... I think it has to come from within. Yes, sir. Because for a person who's sick, the doctor is next to God. Right, sir. Right, he thinks that oh, God will save him, and the doctor is the reincarnation of God here on earth. So when the people start behaving in that fashion, he he doesn't really know where to go. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. India took a certain position on Russia-Ukraine war, right? Kind of a neutral position. They yes. did not condemn Russia. China also did the same. <clears throat> then the Chinese President Xi Jinping went to Russia and made a, some kind of a statement which put him in the Russian camp, more or less. Now, how do you see Russia responding to an India-China border problem? Can India expect a support from Russia? given the fact that whilst both China and, and India have kind of leaned towards Russia, they've not, uh, China has categorically made its position far more clear indirectly. Um, sir, um, though Chinese um, closeness to Russia is worrying for India, 
But sir, I think um, in the past one decade, at the India-Russia relationship has been the most stable relation, a bilateral relation in any two countries taken together. Uh, so secondly, we have a long historical relationship with Russia. So I think, sir, only by basing it on one factor that China has sided with Russia on the war, I don't think that is, that should impact um, India-Russia relation in a very big way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, uh, Pooja. Yes. Okay. Suppose you have five things like money, power, prestige, and career. Can you list them in order of priority? Four things. Four things, yeah. Money, power, prestige, and career growth. Um, I'm first for me would be career, then would be uh, prestige, then would be uh, power, and then would be money. So money you would keep at the end? Yes, ma'am. What are your four principles that you follow in life? Uh, <clears throat> Ma'am, first I uh, try to take a balanced opinion on things. Um, and secondly, I, uh, uh, I have this uh, thing of critically evaluating everything before uh, making a decision. Um, third, I follow is try to reach perfection, though it is not possible, but I am a bit tilted towards perfection in it. And um, I'm fourth, I follow is uh, uh, giving the other person or the other situation a benefit of doubt or compassionate, or, or compassionate uh, outlook. Um, these are the four things I follow. Okay. What do you think? about reservation, should it be economic or otherwise? Ma'am, reservation as a policy was uh, brought in for um, socio-economic, uh, social, mostly for social reasons. Uh, but now the inequalities have changed and uh, there is a lot of intermixing of caste and class and economic and uh, social indicators. So ma'am, I think with the changing situation, um, we can consider uh, reservation um, on based on ca caste as well as on economic indications. If you were to choose one be amongst the two, ma'am, then it should uh, would be based on social uh, uh, social uh, conditions rather than on economic. Okay. What do you think is the difference between a leader and a manager? A leader and a manager. Uh, Ma'am, I think a leader can be a manager, but it is a it is difficult for um, it may be difficult for a manager to be a leader. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I feel leader is a more broad and um, a person who manages as well as. Uh, who strives for a certain outcome and that would differentiate him from just a manager. Okay, last question. I will give you a hypothetical situation. Right. Suppose Gandhi ji, Azad, Bhagat Singh and Netaji Subhash Chand Bose are all alive today. Then who would you choose to lead our country? This is a very difficult question. <laughs> Mama, I, I cannot make a choice. Just try. Ma'am, maybe um, Dr. Sebastian Rubis. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pooja, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, ma'am. Thank you. I saw you've done some research on domestic violence. Yes, ma'am. What was your research about? Uh, Ma'am, it was carried out in a rural health uh, center. So it was about the prevalence of domestic violence. In what were your findings? Uh, Ma'am, the prevalence of domestic violence in the setting was 33%. Uh, 
uh, and um, the most common form of domestic violence was physical violence and there was also present of uh, presence of sexual but violence the most and common form be emotionally uh, or mentally harassing people isn't that more common than people physically beating each other uh, yes ma'am what you are saying is correct but it is very under reported this emotional abuse or this when we are we are conducting a research most of the times it is not reported so does it have any connection with education also yes ma'am it has what is the connection ma'am an educated person um, any partner may be the female or male uh, he'll be in a better position uh, uh, he'll have a better uh, approach towards the other spouse is that true we see high number higher number of cases of <coughs> domestic violence in metropolitan cities rather than rural areas ma'am uh, theoretically yes we expect education to give a person a better understanding and better okay, accommodation okay all that i'm just intrigued as to why you thought of researching on this topic you're a doctor you could have picked up so many other topics why this uh, ma'am because i f- um, felt this that i have seen i had seen this um, in general while growing up also and in my setting also that this was something which was under reported and we actually need to find out what okay let's say you become an ips officer which you aspire to become obviously yes. uh how will you handle domestic violence in your area what steps will you take the major problem in domestic violence is the under reporting so i would focus as an ips officer on making uh, it safer um, um, making the women feel safer but to women under reported because they don't want to leave that person or you know maybe some of them are not earning and they don't have any other means of feeding the children yes, so they ma'am. have to be with the man yes ma'am but there are also cases where women are very scared to report they are they are even scared of uh, um, uh, getting victimized by the police don't you think people right now are doing it the officers what unique thing are you going to do since you've researched on this topic what unique steps will you be taking ma'am from whatever experience i got from my research if we, uh, we if we can integrate this with um, the health reporting uh, for example reporting of domestic violence in a health setting so there the women will be in a better position to do in that in health setting as it uh, ma'am for example during my research we went first door to door to collect uh, data for this however we did not uh, find a lot of uh, cooperation from women whereas when we organized a health camp and women were encouraged to come there so they they reported much better okay you're from maharashtra yes, there is this uh, very weird kind of trend which is happening in bead where women are uh, getting their uterus removed do you know why that's happening um no ma'am i don't know the details of it I'm that's all don't. right uh you're from since you're from maharashtra i want to know from you why gst collection in maharashtra is very high as compared to other states um uh, one of the major reason is that maharashtra is an uh, industrial hub and uh, the production of goods and services is also high so ma'am the gst on the goods and services total collection is high because the base of collection isn't that just common sense but there are other reasons why specifically in maharashtra it is higher as compared to karnataka or gujarat there are also industrial hubs yes ma'am so ma'am then I okay tell me why know. rbi is uh, continuously increasing repo rate ma'am uh, taking into consideration the global financial situation first and second um, the major reason is uh, inflation targeting uh, so it wants to reduce the inflation uh, rate in india so mm-hmm. but there in- when they are increasing the repo rate what are they doing they doing to money supply so they are trying to reduce the money supply and the economy they want to take the money out of the yes, economy ma'am. yes ma'am. so that they can target inflation yes ma'am all right pooja can you tell me what are five most important things in a prescription ma'am the format of the prescription or the if a doctor is writing a prescription what five most important things should be there in his or her mind that they cannot miss to write okay um ma'am first uh, um as i said writing a generic name okay for the the second is um write uh, trying to write it in the local language uh, how many times it should be taken and for how many days okay uh, ma'am the third is other instructions 
uh, like uh, whether it should be taken at uh, uh, with meals without meals uh, so third is ma'am uh, any contraindications if they are there that uh, uh, taking combining of two medications or if a dose is missed then <coughs> what should be done in that case that can be included isn't date and diagnosis important yes ma'am it is but, but I, was, i was specifically telling about the medications so all right thank you thank you ma'am all the best to you thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you an academy let's crack it